Yes. Okay. <laughs> Monday morning, everyone. It is nice and early here in Tampa Bay. I have a busy day of two doctor's appointments. First, a neurologist to look into small fiber neuropathy and my terrible muscular problems I've had since I was an infant and no doctor's been able to figure out. <laughs> And the second one is the long-awaited allergist in Tampa that my hospital referred me to from all of my hospital admissions to hopefully get this random anaphylaxis under control. <coughs> you might notice a few things. One, no mask. Unfortunately, I left my mask in Orlando, but since we don't know what triggers my anaphylaxis, we don't really know if the mask helps or not. So this will be a good trial week to see if the mask helps because we're going back to Orlando on Friday, so I'm going to be without it for five days. So we'll see if it helps me or not. The other thing is I left my camera in Orlando, so now I have to use my phone. I have no idea how that's gonna turn out, so bear with me. I'm really liking to do my vlogs, so I don't wanna stop. The other thing is my patch, my dressing for my port is new. It's the Tegaderm without the white border. I kind of have a little like blister here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's an allergic reaction to the other type of dressing, and I changed my needle last night, so I hope this one is okay. And <clears throat> what's the other thing? There was something else. Oh, my cough is back. Unfortunately, yesterday in the morning, I started getting sick again from this chest and sinus infection despite being on antibiotics. I was doing well, then I started getting sick again. So I gotta call my pulmonologist and see what he has to tell me because <laughs> this isn't okay. <laughs> and my awesome friend Julian's here. Can I show you real quick? Hi. Hey because I can't drive to these appointments that are far away, so he's gonna take me, yay! So, we're at the dog park letting Kylo run around. Let's get started with our day, woo! Woo! <laughs> that is weird. Examination table, looks like a massage table. I'm just here waiting for the neurologist. First appointment of the day. I will let y'all know how it goes. So the appointment went all right. I'm not overly confident in this doctor, but she is investigating a few things, so I'm gonna give her a good chance. So basically, we're drawing blood to check muscle enzymes. She looked over all my records. She knew what Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome was, so that is a plus. And she's gonna get all my records from Mayo, do some digging, and then progress from there. I asked her what she thought it could be, and she said she has no idea, honestly, but that's why she's digging, and she wants to get you know some thorough evaluation done first before she starts looking into diagnoses. I did show her a video I took a few months ago where my legs started twitching uncontrollably and she said it was clonus and tonus. That's what my physical therapist said because it happened while I was at PT. So that was good that I had that video to show her. She prescribed Lyrica to help with my pain in the meantime and control symptoms, but I'm nervous to start it one because of these allergic reactions. I could have a reaction to it too. We don't know what I have. Lyrica might not even treat it, and also it is a medication for depression too, so I'm afraid it's gonna mess with my mood. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna start it yet. Um, <clears throat> I talked to my pulmonologist's office. The nurse is gonna consult with my pulmonologist and they'll call me back about this cough and my asthma that's not doing well. And we are on the way to Tampa now to see the new allergist. However, first we are gonna get some lunch because well, I'm not hungry, but you know, it's important to eat. So that is what we're doing. We got Panera, yay! And we've got Harlow under there. She attracted some attention as we walked in. And I am not feeling great, so I ordered a little soup. If I cannot stomach it, I'm gonna try a smoothie from Planet Smoothie next door. Or maybe I'll get both. Hopefully I'll start to feel a little less nauseous. Gastroparesis for ya. So I tried to take a bite, nearly puked, and I thought, why deal with these horrible symptoms when I have the solution? in my bag. So I'm going to do some IV Zofran, which I'm going to put through my port. And I've got the needle here and everything I need. So let's get it ready. Look at this mess. <laughs> There's so much trash associated with this. And I have to find a sharps container for the needle. I brought something with me to hold it in case we don't have one here in the bathrooms or something. And there's my food. So we are here at the allergist and I'm feeling a little bit nervous because like IV Benadryl is not a traditional treatment and I'm worried he's gonna tell me it's wildly inappropriate or he's gonna tell me that it's all in my head and that, I don't know, it's just like, my anaphylaxis is so crazy. I'm just worried he's not gonna believe me or something like that. Just like sometimes doctors call us crazy when we have complex medical conditions and they like dismiss us. He knows what I'm talking about. But Carla's here and she's cute, so that's always nice. Good girl. So fingers crossed, here we go. 
Okay, so I hate to say it, but I had a terrible feeling about this doctor and this appointment, and I was totally right. He said I'm a psychic. I'm a psychic. Seriously. Okay, this doctor rushed us through the appointment. He asked me, why are you even here? I have no idea why you're here. Why are you coming all the way to Tampa? He was literally the worst. <clears throat> he was the worst. He questioned my diagnoses. Are they even real? How basically, many medications you're on? Yeah, basically calling me like a woman in hysterics, which I totally called that. I was like, we're going to go in there. It's going to be some guy who thinks I'm a crazy young, you know, little girl. Basically what happened. And he <clears throat> even, he asked me how old I was three different times. Wasn't listening rude he said i have other patients too. yes he was like i don't even know why you're here your case is too complex like basically there's no way i can deal with you in the three quarter hours and i have other patients to see exactly those words like i'm not making i'm not exaggerating it horrible appointment he wants me to send him records i asked him i'm like here are all my records he's like okay i need you to send me copies i asked you don't have a copy machine no i have other patients to see Oh my gosh! Okay, obviously I am not of importance to you. Goodness, he was not having it. He, he was not happy to be in there. And we're both autistic, so it's very hard for us to pick up on rudeness. We picked up on it! Big time! Real, real, real bad. The only good idea he had was for me to go be admitted to the NIH, National Institute of Health, to be evaluated for mastocytosis because they have a center there. But... I don't trust this doctor. I don't want to send him any of my records. I don't want him handling any of my medical cases. I do not trust him. So I will talk about that option with my POTS doctor. But like I mentioned before, I'm not stable enough health-wise to travel out of state. So that's not even an option for now. He didn't even mention any of my treatment plans or anything like that. He was just negative and rude. So unfortunately, as it happens, sometimes appointments just go horribly. And that's that. We just got to keep moving forward and vent about it with your friends. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. Yeah. We were both just so shocked when we left that room. We were, we looked Awful. at each other like, wow. We were looking at each other like during it. Yes. Uh, like books between <laughs> <her>. <laughs> 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 Sending looks. It's okay. We are going to overcome this with smoothies. Let's go get smoothies. <laughs> we got our smoothies. I got a chocolate Elvis and... Julian got basically a chocolate Elvis without the chocolate or peanut butter, which is ludicrous. Okay, so anyways, I have a few more things I have to get out of my system. One, this doctor kept asking why in the world I came to him. Because my allergist referred me to him for more answers. Secondly, he told me that I don't need to go to the ER when I have anaphylaxis because people don't die of it. Okay, maybe people aren't dying of it anymore because we have EpiPens, but that doesn't mean it's not a deadly disorder. Okay, your throat closes and you can't breathe. It's very life-threatening. Then he also said, I'd get rid of the port if I were you. And didn't give a good explanation why. He was just so ignorant about it. I need this to live, okay? It's the only way I'm getting my IV Benadryl. And it's also the only way I can sustain my life, uh, quality of life with my infusions for my POTS. And then, uh, what was the other thing that really... He kept saying he has to go see his other patients. There was something else that really got to me. Uh, I don't know. He was just questioning... My diagnoses and my medications because I'm 20 and I look fine. I can't be this sick. It was just like literally ignorant ignorant and rude and one of the worst appointments I've had in a long time. And I had a feeling it was not going to go well. I usually am very positive, but just something in my gut told me this was not going to be a good appointment. So now I'm stuck without the allergist and it looks like I'm going to have to go out of state for a mast cell expert. But like I said, not stable enough to travel and I'm just gonna have to wait until my health evens out <sighs> but it's okay um, doctor appointments can be really frustrating sometimes and it can be really discouraging but you just got to keep moving forward and keep looking for those answers and cheer yourself up with something like smoothies <laughs> <coughs> So we're home now. Julian went to get his fiance from work. <clears throat> really thankful for him taking me to my appointments. It's really sweet. <clears throat> um, so my pulmonologist called me back. He prescribed me more antibiotics. Um, this is what happens with my immunoglobulin levels, A and M, that are lowered. I am on antibiotics like every month. It's ridiculous. So anyways... Uh, he also gave me the spacer last week. You just put the inhaler here, 
and breathe in here. And it helps because when I'm in a coughing fit, I can't time the inhalation correctly. <coughs> but this, you don't have to worry about timing. You can inhale the medication easily. Um, also, one more thing I didn't tell you all about that doctor. Um, he told me that <coughs> there was no treatment for my syndrome. Like, how ignorant. There's lots of treatment for allergies and, and anaphylaxis. And the other thing he said is, I can't document that you actually have anaphylaxis because I haven't seen an episode. I have a whole packet of medical discharge papers from all my hospital admissions yeah. and multiple doctors. Yeah, three packets. Yeah, three. Like, and ER discharge papers to give to this doctor about my anaphylaxis and notes from my stay, and he wouldn't take it. He's like, I have to see it. I'm not just gonna like, I don't know, randomly have one in your office. It's crazy. Okay. Obviously, I'm not pleased with that visit. I'm still heated about it. <laughs> so I called the hospital's attending allergist who referred me to that doctor, and I told him, listen, it didn't work out. I need help. I had an allergist, you know, previously that did the skin prick testing and all that, but even she told me, I can't really help you anymore. Let's um, send you to an out-of-state doctor, which, like I said, I can't do right now because of my health, and she's going to start me on Zolaire shots. But the thing is, she's really far away from me. I have, like, an allergist here. You know, if nobody can really help me because my case is complex, then let me go to the allergist from the hospital who's here in my local town. And I actually liked him more than any doctor I've seen for allergies so far. He knew about mast cell enough, and I just need a doctor to continue my allergy prescriptions, start me on Zolaire, and help bridge the gap until I can go see the allergist out of state who knows about mast cell, a mast cell expert. It's just like, I need somebody here locally so I don't feel like I'm doing this alone. And so they're gonna call me back. Hopefully I can get in to see him because I really liked him. And then I don't have to rely on somebody to take me to my allergist. I can go see my allergist whenever if I can get in with the doctor from my local hospital. Plus if I go inpatient, I can see my doctor. So <clears throat> that's it for today. Judd's back. Uh, Judd said that he always misses the interesting appointments with the terrible doctors because I know Judd was there. Ooh, I was telling Julian, oh my gosh, I, like it's kind of maybe a good thing that Judd wasn't there because things would have gotten heated in that office. But <clears throat> <clears throat> that's it for today. Um, real quick, Judd got a haircut. I did. My joints hurt. Oh no. You understand the syndrome? Just no, kidding. I'm still <laughs> practicing handcuffing all day. Ah, fun. You can handcuff Hippo. She was good all day. Well, that's it. Thank you for joining me on my adventure. I know it sucks. I was really optimistic and hopeful and looking forward to that appointment since all the anaphylaxis started and they referred me there, but big letdown. Sometimes it happens, but you just got to keep moving forward and keep creating game plans. So my next step is to continue with the IV Benadryl and all the treatments we've set up, the nebulizing treatments, H1, H2 blockers and all that. And hopefully I can get in to see this local allergist and he can start me on Zoller shots and I can get in to see a mast cell expert if we can stabilize my anaphylaxis. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope to see y'all tomorrow.